Ready? Greetings all! Last Outrider here. Are you ready for the next Black Legion video? Good! Because we start now with Dark Pacts. Whilst other warlords were content to make pacts with individual gods and demons, eagerly giving up control for a sliver of power, Abaddon was different. In the long decades of the Great Crusade and the bloody years of the Horus Heresy that followed, he had studied the way in which Horus had waged his wars and dominated his allies. What Abaddon observed was first the hand of the emperor and later the influence of the dark gods at work limiting the greatness of his Primarch and ultimately leading to his demise. Abaddon would make no such mistake, and though he would court the Chaos Gods as allies, he vowed, foolishly perhaps, never to be completely within their thrall. It is still unclear how Abaddon was able to use the will of the gods for his own ends whilst remaining unscathed by their power. Some cite that it is the blood he shares with Horus, fueling old rumors that he was the War Master's one pure clone son. Others say that Abaddon was broken in some fundamental way by the death of his Primarch and the defeat on Terra. His mind consumed by hatred and rage until nothing of his humanity remained. Another tale maintains that Abaddon was never human at all and is instead a construct of the dark gods themselves, an expression of their hatred for humanity embodied. Whatever the reason, the gods chose Abaddon to be their champion and gifted him with a freedom of will denied to so many of their servants. Perhaps impressed by the audacity and grandeur of his vengeance. Regardless of how this favor was won, the period after the destruction of the clones and the renaming of the sons of Horus was a time of war and domination for Abaddon and the Black Legion. As it grew in size and strength, it exerted its power over the other warbands within the Eye of Terror, crushing and absorbing countless lesser warlords, bending them to the will of the Legion and adding their strength to its growing ranks. Meanwhile, Abaddon also sought other ways, both to increase his personal power and to learn all he could about this new and dangerous realm in which the traitor legionaries found themselves. The Despoiler had already discovered much during his own dark pilgrimage. The journey he took in the lost years between the end of the Horus Heresy and his return to the ruins of Malium. On his travels, he had learnt that the power that demons represented could be harnessed and controlled, just as one man might control another. He also realized that the Eye of Terror was a place containing unnumbered arcane devices and forbidden weapons, the likes of which were unknown to much of the galaxy, and that many of them could be turned to his ends. Secrets of the Warp Abaddon's rise to mastery of the legions of chaos exists only as dark whispers and legend. What is known is that he left behind forever 
Ezekiel Abaddon, first captain of the sons of Horus, and became Abaddon the Despoiler, master of the Black Legion. Though mostly lost in the twisting tendrils of history, there remains grim stories of his triumph over demons and his defeat of jealous warlords. Abaddon went to a world in the warp where time flowed backwards, spinning out of sync with the space around it. In the center of the world, a demon prince of Zinch sat coiled around its core, counting back from the end of days. Abaddon wanted this power for his own and plunged into the tides of time to confront the demon. Years slipped backwards as he clawed his way towards the demon prince, finally arriving at its feet and demanding its obedience. Scornful of the upstart mortal, the demon asked why it shouldn't slay him where he stood. In response, Abaddon challenged it to an impossible game. If Abaddon could guess the demon's name, it would pledge its allegiance to him. If he failed, he would surrender the artifacts he carried. But the demon must tell him its name to prove it had not cheated. Unable to resist the challenge, the demon accepted the conditions of the game, mocking the mortal for his foolishness. How could the demon have known that this was the second time Abaddon had stood before it? The first time he had failed to win the contest, but had learned the demon's name as proof. Surrendering his artifacts, Abaddon had then stepped back into the tides of time and returned to the warp years before he landed on the world, leaving a message for himself in the future before he was extinguished by paradox. Thus, he ensured events would be altered and the demon would be his. So it came to pass that Abaddon enslaved Zingorgon, the fractured demon of time. With the future memories of the demon and the dark sorceries of his cabal, Abaddon would perceive the fates and shape his own destiny. In another legend, it is said that Abaddon set an entire system ablaze so that it burned a secret upon the stars. Setting down on a series of demon worlds on the outer edge of the Eye of Terror, the master of the Black Legion turned the primitive inhabitants to his will, killing mighty mutant champions and laying waste to entire continents until the debased tribes and twisted demon thralls bowed to him. Then, in a single terrible night, Abaddon commanded his new servants to set their planets on fire, Millions of souls torching twisted forests, feudal cities, and vast crimson grasslands. As the flames grew higher, the primitives then threw themselves into the fires, adding their own bodies to further fuel the inferno. To the sound of cackling demons, each world of the cursed system glowed and flickered in the night, the warp around them boiling in response to the orgy of death and destruction. From his vessel, Abaddon watched with pleasure as the tides of the Imperium responded to the carnage and changed direction, opening a hidden gateway where the portal led, the legend does not say for sure, only that it was another realm created long ago 
by a lost race, allowing the despoiler to travel between worlds, slipping past the Imperium's defenses. On worlds where the laws of nature had no meaning, the Black Legion crushed scores of rival warbands, turning their warlords to their cause or making violent, bloody examples of them. In the clockwork fortress of Heslock, thrice blind, the Black Legion defeated the sorcerer's demonic crystal wisps and gave him the choice of service or life everlasting. His severed head impaled on a spike of living crystal. Wisely, Heslock bowed to Abaddon. On a rancid planet of endless decay, the Black Legion waded through a turgid river of human filth to bring down the pestilent fortress of the demon prince Anaxthrak. After destroying the demon's army, Abaddon bound him with warp magics and force-fed him the remains of his warriors until Anaxthrax agreed to offer his allegiance. Each time the Black Legion would appear above a world, its warriors knew they had a choice. Join the despoiler or become another example of the unchecked might of the Black Legion. As the Black Legion brought one war band after another to heal, Abaddon studied the worlds of the Eye of Terror. The more Abaddon learned of the Eye, the more he understood the raw power it offered, and how, lost in its limbo of timelessness, he might be able to wage war upon the Imperium not for centuries, but for millennia. In his mind, the first inklings of a grand and dark war began to materialize. The nature of his revenge was finally taking shape. Abaddon worked endlessly to expand his army. Every world Abaddon discovered and every foe he faced he turned to his cause or crushed them mercilessly underfoot. So it was. The Black Legion grew. Its ranks populated not just with traitor space marines, but with a menagerie of cursed souls. Yes, that was a long video for people because I wanted you to get just the whole concept of what's going to be coming in the future of 40k because for all the people out there still debating that 40k is not going to join Age of Sigmar I hope this video changes your mind okay I mean you, I can explain it all to you but you hear that Abaddon like Zinch is now traveling through time he actually has a demon prince who lives backwards, the tale of Benjamin Button style. He's been, it's been, to the end of time and is living backwards. He knows everything that's going to happen and is now going backwards. On top of that, he opened up this mysterious portal to another dimension created by an unknown race, which allows him to travel between worlds and completely bypass imperial defenses just to go anywhere he wants at any time. <clears throat> oh, and of course the fact that they actually use the phrase the end times here. So let's just put it this way. Abaddon is Archeon, the Ever Chosen, in 40k. And possibly he's Archeon the Ever Chosen in Warhammer. Maybe that was the portal to the world that he, that he jumped off to that was created by an unknown race. But I think the parallels between Archeon and Abaddon are obvious. And the end time 
is coming, people. Until next time, where we will talk about warp-crafted weapons. Bye.